Hello ladies, welcome back to the Modern Goddess channel. So I realize this title is a bit odd because typically when we are talking about feeling secure in a relationship, we're referring to ourselves, right? And this video is about ways to make a man feel secure in a relationship. But the reason why I'm making this video is because I really did not want to leave my clients hanging. For those of you who don't know, next month will be my last month offering femininity coaching services. And I have a lot of clients who struggle with this, feeling secure in their relationships. And they just cannot get their men to understand. And they have tried so many different things, everything except for the things that I am going to be talking about in this video. Now, for women, security could mean a multitude of things, right? It could mean financial stability. Some women, when they're talking about security, they're talking about physical safety and protection. Some women are talking about emotional support. So being able to be open and vulnerable and your man really receive it and be compassionate and all of those things, right? Um, some women, when they're talking about security, they're talking about marriage. Some women are talking about just commitment and taking the next level, taking things to the next level in a relationship. Some women are just talking about connection and reassurance, right? So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about security. I'm not talking about how you feel about yourself, like your self-esteem, your self-confidence, your self-worth and things like that, right? Now, notice that I just listed out like a bunch of things that women might mean when they say security. For men, it only means one of three things. And that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video, because if you are not giving your man these three things, then you are not going to feel secure. If he doesn't feel secure in the relationship, you're not going to feel secure in the relationship. So make sure that you implement the things that I'm going to be discussing in this video as best you can. Number three is the most important one. One and two are important as well. However, if you don't get number three right, then one and two really won't matter. So make sure you watch all the way to the end so that you can see what number three is. All right. So the first one is that you must welcome his masculinity. When I say welcome his masculinity, what does that mean? I mean that you must appreciate it. You must make space for it. You must compliment it. And by complimenting it, I'm not saying that give him compliments about his masculinity. But that means being more in your feminine space so that there can be balance, right? Um, when it comes to masculine men, understand that they go and they stay where their efforts are acknowledged, where their skill sets are praised, where they feel needed, where they feel purposeful. And when you are the type of woman who feels like you have to constantly prove that you can do what a man can do, or you have to, you feel like you have to constantly prove that you don't need a man, even though you have a good one, then you're going to end up kind of pushing him away because he's going to feel like, well, there's really no space for me, right? And understand that your man, if he, if he wanted a man, he would be gay, you know, and I don't even know if we can say that word on YouTube nowadays, but if you're a heterosexual woman, you don't want a gay man, you know, I would think not. So don't be out here trying to prove that you can be like a man and think like a man and act like a man and provide like a man. He's not interested in a man. He wants a lady. So allow him to take up the masculine roles in your relationship so that you can feel like a lady and he can feel needed and purposeful and welcomed as far as his manhood is concerned. So many men nowadays have this internal conflict where they really are apprehensive about what they should and shouldn't do with women. And I see this a lot in public with men. Some of you may have noticed it as well, where a man will maybe want to help a woman but he'll be afraid he or he may even want to pursue a woman but he'll be kind of like hesitant to do so because he won't know how it's going to be received imagine for a second ladies if you will being created and designed a certain way and i mean and this is just historically generation after generation after generation biologically and just the anatomy of your makeup it's just in you it's intrinsic it's in your dna to be a certain way, to think a certain way, to want to do certain things, to want to be of service, you know, to have a certain type of energy. And then society wakes up one day and just tells you that everything about the way you were created is just wrong or everything about the way you were designed is toxic, right? And now you have people making you feel like you're in the wrong when you're just simply being what you are meant to be. 
right? And that is what's happened to a lot of masculine men nowadays. So many men are getting pulled into marriage counseling, being labeled as narcissists, even though they're not being diagnosed as such, their ladies are referring to them as narcissists. And the world is just telling them, oh, you shouldn't do this as a man, and you shouldn't do that as a man, and you shouldn't do this, and shouldn't do that. And a lot of these things that they're being told that they shouldn't do are things that fall under the category of being a leader, a protector, or a provider. And so when you're in a relationship with a masculine man and you don't welcome his masculinity, you instead demonize it or make it seem like he's wrong for just simply being a man, he's not going to feel very secure with you. And think about just what that would be like. Again, imagine just the way you are designed and created. The world is telling you it's toxic and it's wrong. You're not going to feel very secure or safe most places, which is why a lot of men have that internal conflict. They don't really know what they should or shouldn't do. They're just really afraid to just be themselves. There have been so many instances where I've been out in public where a man has wanted to help me, but he had to like second guess himself or a man has tried to give me some advice, but he feel like he has to give me this big disclaimer before he says it or after he says it. And I'm like, it's all that isn't necessary. Like I appreciate that you are a man, be a man, thank you, you know? But again, if you're in a relationship with a man and you're constantly making him feel like, oh, you're not soft enough or you're not gentle enough or you're not feminine enough or you're too manly or you're too masculine and you're just labeling him all of these negative things because of his manhood, then he's not going to feel secure with you. And don't be surprised if another woman who really wants a masculine man snatches him up. And if you're watching this video, you're probably wanting to feel more secure and the idea of a woman snatching her man up is the last thing you want to hear right now. But I'm just being real with you ladies, like, because it's the reality. There are so many women out here who would love to have a man come in and take the lead and take control and make the tough decisions and help solve problems. And there are so many women who would love that, that sense of protection, regardless if it does mean her man is a little territorial. They would love that, right? And they're looking for that. But there are so many women out there who have that, but they don't welcome it. They don't appreciate it. And if you don't welcome it, you don't appreciate it, then you're not reciprocating the, the masculine energy because you're thinking it's toxic, right? Um, so all of that is, is a part of it. Welcoming his masculinity, making sure that he knows that it is needed. It is, it is purposeful in your life. And um, one of the ways that many women do this, like one of the ways that women do not accept a man's masculinity is when he is offering solutions. That's like one of the biggest ones where they just refuse to listen. That makes them feel like you do not value his input. Um, when you don't want to cooperate when it comes to solving a problem that the two of you are having, where you're just kind of questioning everything that he says, every step that he makes, every move that he makes, you just questioning his manhood or his role. And then you feel like you have to step in because you're afraid to relinquish control. There are so many layers to it. I'm not going to get into it too much. <laughs> but that is the first one, right? So if you want your man to feel secure with you, then you need to welcome his masculinity. Do not demonize it. Do not label him. Do not make him feel like him simply being a man is toxic. Otherwise, he will start distancing himself from you. Or you could start emasculating that man where he might feel like, oh, the world thinks I'm too manly. Let me soften myself up. And then you're going to end up with a son instead of a grown man. And you're not going to like that, right? So just keep that in mind. That's number one. Um, and real quick before I move on to number two, um, something that I have seen a lot lately since society has started calling masculinity toxic, um, where you do have some men who do have that internal conflict and they will try to be a little bit more considerate and they'll, you know, they'll walk on the eggshells and, you know, they're just, you know, they're just doing what they think is the right thing to do. They're softening themselves up. But then you have some men who are like, well, F what society says, I'm just going to be myself and I'm going to go even harder to prove to you that masculinity is needed. And then they end up becoming the worst of them all and up proving that masculinity can be toxic because they end up being overly aggressive. They end up being way too harsh. You know, they end up being extremely controlling for no reason 
at all. Like they end up just showing little to no compassion, giving no emotional support whatsoever. And so a lot of that comes by way of people constantly saying, oh, masculinity is toxic or you're a narcissist for this and this and that. After a while, people get hear tired of hearing that, you know, and they're gonna be like, well, if you're gonna label me as such, well, then I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you what masculinity can be, right? So if you don't want your man to turn into that monster, then just welcome, welcome the masculinity that he has. Don't make him feel like it's a bad thing because you're gonna miss it when, when it's gone, okay? So that's number one. Number two, to make your man feel secure, you need to make sure that your mentality is somewhat in alignment with his. If your man is constantly at war with the way you think, he is not going to feel secure in your relationship. What do I mean by this? I mean that when the two of you have disagreements, right? And so many ladies over the years, my clients, they were like, well, he doesn't like it when, when I disagree with him. He doesn't want me to be able to think for myself. He doesn't want me to have my own opinion. And, you know, and I feel your frustration, ladies. I've been there. I used to think the same thing. But here's the thing. Here's the reality. When you have a disagreement, in your mind, you might think he is blowing this out of proportion. Why is he making such a big deal about this? It's not that serious. In his mind, he's thinking about the future. In his mind, well, he's thinking that you're difficult too, but he's also thinking about the future. He's thinking, if this is how she thinks, then I might need to reconsider our future together because your opinion is a reflection of how you think, is a reflection of your mentality. And your mentality is what's gonna raise his children. He might think, well, I don't want a woman who has that type of perception of things raising my seeds, right? Or he might think, well, if anything were to happen to me and she is responsible for making decisions for me, like if you have to make decisions on his behalf at some point, then of course your mentality is going to determine the type of decisions you make, which is definitely going to affect his life. So he's going to be thinking about stuff like that. Your mentality is going to determine how you represent him when he's not around or how you're behaving when he's not around. Your mentality is going to determine the principles that you have. And if the two of you cannot see eye to eye on basic principles, meaning you can't see eye to eye on what's right versus what's wrong, you are going to have a very miserable relationship. Y'all are going to fight about stuff all of the time. You're going to have a lot of unresolved conflict, okay? And you're not going to feel secure, and neither is he right? Your, your mentality also will determine your intentions. And this is a big one for the single ladies who are seeking security as far as marriage is concerned, right? If you are talking about why you want to get married and everything that comes out of your mouth is about having a husband, but nothing is about being a wife, he's not going to feel very secure because your mentality is showing that you just want to take, 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 you just want to use him and it's just all about you and what you're going to get out of it, which many men are already afraid of marriage for that reason, right? And so you want to make sure that you want to be a wife and that you are mentioning things about being a homemaker, a helpmate, a caregiver, a lover, a mother, you know, all of these things that are going to make him feel secure and make him feel like he's made a good choice in investing you know in this relationship and committing to you but if you're just talking about oh i just want to get married because i just want a partner i don't want to have to do it all alone anymore or i i want to i want to get married because i'm lonely i want companionship you know that you could that that doesn't have anything to do with you being a wife right um and then also if you say things like well i, I want to get married because i just want protection you know i, I just want somebody to that's going to make me feel safe Okay, that, all of that is wonderful, but at what point is he hearing that you're going to pour into him in some way? You get what I'm saying, ladies? So make sure you don't make that mistake because, again, that is a part of your mentality. It's the way that you think. And when you think about marriage, if the only thing you're thinking about is A, the wedding, and then B, what you're going to get out of it, then he's going to peep that. And the more that you have those conversations and you don't mention being a wife and what a wife does and how you're going to add value into his life and make things easier for him, 
the longer it will take for the two of you to get married and you're going to end up single. He's going to marry someone else. So <laughs> make sure that your mentality is in alignment with his and that he doesn't have to question the way that you think. Because again, if he is at war with your thoughts and he's always trying to sit there and, and convince you to see eye to eye with him and he has to give you all these long monologues to help you understand basic principles, the more he has to do that, the less secure you're going to feel because the less secure he feels because he's going to have to keep questioning, well, man, like what if this is how she thinks. How is how is this going to play out for us in the future? Right. So keep that in mind. Your mentality, it has to be in alignment. I know that one might be a little confusing, um, but it, it is important. All right. So the third one, and this is the most important one. Keep this in mind, ladies. Security for a masculine man equals consistency. If you are not consistent, then one and two will make absolutely no difference, right? So for example, you can welcome his masculinity, but if you are not consistent, then that means you're going to welcome it this week and demonize it next week, right? You can have a mentality that's in alignment with his and you can see eye to eye, you can have the same principles, good intentions, you can represent him well out in public and all that stuff. You're able to have disagreements, but still be respectful and be open to receiving, you know, his perspective and all that good stuff. But if you're not consistent with it, then you're going to be like that today. And then tomorrow you're going to change your mind, right? So you got to understand that consistency makes a man feel secure with you. When you are hot and cold on and off, one week you respect him, the next week he's he's the scum of the earth. You know, when you're submissive today and then he says something that you don't like and then all of a sudden you are being extremely difficult and completely defiant, then yeah, then you're not going to get whatever reassurance you're looking for, whatever connection you're looking for, whatever commitment you're looking for, because he does not know what you're going to do or how you're going to think from one day to the next is completely unpredictable. It's mentally and emotionally unstable. And if your mood is up and down and up and down and up and down, he has absolutely no idea what you could possibly do when you're really, really upset, right? Because we, you know, historically, when women get really, really upset and they're really far in their emotions, we, we do some crazy stuff. Right. And so when you're like hot and cold and up and down like that, he has absolutely no idea what to expect from you. So consistency is really important. Now, understand consistency does not mean perfection, ladies. You have permission to, to mess up sometimes. You have permission to say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing. So let's say, for example, you're working on improving your communication skills or being more respectful. But then you slip up and you you, you raise your tone. Um, you raise your voice during a conversation or you roll your eyes or I don't know you walk away in the middle of a conversation or give him the silent treatment I don't know you just do something that's just wrong something that you know you should not do right you shouldn't do those things um here's the thing if you do those things and you don't hold yourself accountable for it you don't correct it you don't you don't catch it check it change it apologize and then try to make that adjustment right then if you don't do that then you're going to have to start from step one Meaning you're going to have to start all over. If he says, oh, I need you, I need to see you do this consistently for five months, then you're back at day one. You understand? But if you make a mistake, if you mess up and you hold yourself accountable, you know what, you, I shouldn't have did that. Let me fix my tone. Or you know what, I'm sorry, I'm giving you the silent treatment. I shouldn't be doing that. We're supposed to be working on communication. Let me fix it. And you're able to adjust it right then and there. That shows maturity. That shows growth. That shows consistent effort. Right. So even if you don't get it right consistently, the fact that you are consistently trying to do the right thing and trying to improve the relationship, trying to become a better woman, that is consistency. Right. So don't think that it means perfection. You can slip up sometimes. Just fix it. That's it. Don't act like it didn't happen. Don't let 24 hours go by without acknowledging it and apologizing and correcting yourself. OK, because you'll get a pass if you're able to fix it. But if you just don't, then it's a problem. And then if you just keep making the mistake over and over and over and over again, then that doesn't show growth. It just shows that you're, you're very manipulative at <laughs> getting him to forgive you, right? So um, um, consistency, that is very important. And this also plays a role when it comes to your decision making. So for example, let's say that 
one day you're telling him, oh, I would love to be a career woman and have this big business and travel and do this and do this and that. And then the next week you're like, you know, I, I actually really just want to be a stay at home wife, you know, and take care of the children. And he has absolutely no idea what he can do for you. He has no idea which moves to make. So don't be surprised if he starts just focusing on himself because it's too risky to try to invest into any future with you based off of your feelings. Because if you cannot be consistent with how you feel about something, if you're like, well, I feel good about it today and I feel bad about it tomorrow, why would he invest time, energy, give you his last day? Why would he move forward with that? When he doesn't know that next week, you might completely change your mind, right? So consistency, consistency equals security to a man. That is the biggest one. You must work on that. Again, make mistakes, that's fine. Just catch it, check it, change it, correct yourself. All right, so those are three things. Understand, if your man does not feel like his masculinity is welcomed, appreciated, needed with you, if he doesn't feel like there's a space for him, if you constantly are trying to prove to him that you don't need a man or that you can do everything that a man can do, don't be surprised when he walks away and finds a woman who welcomes his masculinity and his made space for it, right? So that's one. Number two, your mentality. Yes, you're gonna have disagreements sometimes. It's okay for you to have your own opinion about things. At the same time, you gotta understand that those little disagreements, a lot of times they're deeper than just the two of you just thinking differently. A lot of times they really do make a man apprehensive about moving forward with you, about building a future with you. So the two of you should be in agreement when it comes to what's right and what's wrong, about principles, about relationship values, about finances, about how you wanna raise your children, about what's appropriate when it comes to interacting with the opposite sex. The two of you should be on the same page when it comes to those things, right? So keep that in mind. And then also remember your intentions. All of that plays a role in your mentality as well. Make sure he understands that you have good intentions because if he feels like you don't have good intentions, right, because of your mentality, then he's not going to feel secure. He's going to feel like he's being used or taken advantage of, right? And you're not going to get the security that you need, right? And the third one, again, is consistency. That is number one. That is the biggest one. You must be consistent with whatever it is you're doing. If you're working on communication, if you're working on being more respectful, if you're working on being more submissive, you're working on homemaking, you need to be consistent with making these adjustments and these improvements. Once you are, then you will notice a difference in how he treats you and how he interacts with you. Okay? Peace so much, love, ladies.